Okay, here we have uh, $3,000 worth of bismuth just right here. Each one of these uh, blocks is 33 pounds of 99.9% .9 uh, pure bismuth, so we have 132 pounds of bismuth. We have a 2 inch by 2 inch by 1 inch block of neodymium iron boron, and beneath that we have uh, two copper sheets taped together. They weigh 1 pound 6 ounces in total. Very heavy. Very heavy. Not thin copper sheets at all. So let's talk about magnetic permeability, dielectric permittivity, and magnetic reluctivity as per bismuth. You can't talk about magnetism without talking about diamagnetism. But diamagnetism is a posterior attribute. What comes first is dielectric inertia. Remember, as I've said before, all bismuth is depleted neptunium. Uh, a lot of things, including uranium, 235, 238, and plutonium, and thorium, a lot of the really heavy radioactive elements, they all terminate in the lead. Only one thing terminates into bismuth 83, or bismuth 209, and that is neptunium. And uh, here you have it. This is depleted neptunium, i.e. bismuth 209. So, right now we have along our dielectric inertial plane, let's move our magnet against the one pound, six ounce, two copper plates taped together. You notice I'm not really getting anything. There still is some centrifugal magnetism along this edge. But the copper and the bismuth are, quote unquote, attracted to under dielectric voidance. Attraction means nothing. Attraction denotatively is only a description, it is not an explanation, but let's just use the word attraction for right now for simplicity. The copper and the bismuth are as attracted to the dielectric inertial plane and the centripetal point of the magnet as is two opposite poles of any magnet. Okay? So, you see what we're seeing here? Dielectric inertial plane along the copper. Now, we're not going to make contact, we're not going to touch the copper. Let's take a look at centrifugal divergent magnetism. Remember, centripetal here, dielectric inertial here. You can consider that centripetal. This is what's driving the magnet. This quote unquote block wall, which means nothing, is a dielectric inertial plane concentrated at, not located at, the central part of this magnet. Okay, not touching the copper plate, not touching it very little motion on my hand, on the part of my hand. You see this? No trickery. You can do this without the bismuth underneath it, but it requires a lot more effort. This, once in a little while, I'll accidentally touch the copper with an edge, but I'm not touching the copper now. I'm a little over a quarter of an inch away. Very little effort on my part. Remember, I've got enormous friction. I mean, this copper and this bismuth are not polished in the slightest. You can imagine how it would move if uh, both the pieces were highly polished. I have enormous amount of friction between the copper and the bismuth right now. So you see that? So what's going on there that is not going on here? Why? Is bismuth 83 stable, the most stable element in the universe? It is not radioactive, by the way. That was a fallacious test. You can read about it in the third edition of the book. And covering these secrets of mag magnetism, all bismuth, no matter how purely refined, has a few atoms of polonium-210 in it. Why can we use this as a conductive material, and we can't use bismuth, other than regarding its tactile properties, obviously not being the same as copper? What's the difference? What's the difference between this and this, and why can't we use bismuth? This copper is a dielectric reflector. Bismuth is not a dielectric reflector. Bismuth is attracted to the centripetal. You can't actually see it, because I'm obviously not going to start rotating 33 pound slabs of pure bismuth, but there is as much traction here at the centripetal points, especially here, Especially if you swipe it across, you can actually feel it grabbing, for lack of a better word, it's under dielectric voidance, dielectric inertial plane of the magnet to the bismuth. Let's give a really brief analogy. What separates out one proton between this bismuth and the most deadly, dangerous, one millionth of a gram will kill your ass dead polonium, which is just one proton above this? What's the difference? 
Let's go into a second video on that in a lower resolution and talk about it. So, for part two, next.